What's up, a believer? I know a man who used to brood all night. He lived in constant fright. I heard his cries gifted by the broken man, his life a constant fight. Every morning he rose to a barrage of crisis and got punched on all sides. Eventually, he slid out into depression when hope became extinct in his sight. Excuse me. Let's say that yes. man was. Uh, is it rap? Is it the to the no, guy? it's spoken word. Perhaps the man is spoken word. Right now, yes. Every cry. Okay. So what's this spoken word all about? Yeah, um, spoken word. It's um, basically a form of expression. It's um, poetry that's performed for an audience. So who did this spoken word? Yeah, actually, that's my voice. Wow, that's actually good. Yeah, yeah, very good. My beans could afford me. Very good. Well done. But then I realized there is no flawless bean. My name is Valentine Onyeka Ogunaka, aka Brainbox, and I'm a spoken word artist, community activist, and entrepreneur. I possess a bachelor's in library and information science from Amanda Bello University, Zaria, and I'm the founder of Impact Speaks, a community of creative young adults. I also have other talents, but their spoken word is what I am focused on because that's what I'm mostly passionate about, and that's what I'm doing for a living. Fairly spoken word pays, but then we haven't gotten to that point where people will be paying millions of naira to have you perform at their show or do something for them. Back at my parents' house, I used to create stories, compose rap music, as well as you know write in the way that is very poetic. But then, with time, I began to realize that I can also take this professional. Like when I came to Abuja. I, this, I started attending spoken word events such as open mic slams, open mic and then slams, and that was how it all started. Maybe if we look closer, we'll discover there's more to love than just being lovers. For just one night, all my mother ever told me went out the window. All my inhibitions relegated to the abyss. As I relished the company of a total stranger, as I looked him dead in the eye and bore my soul, factually revealing things I never told a soul in ways I never had. A lot of people think it's crazy, but then I, this is where I have placed my faith in, and I treat it as my only chance in life. Everything around me inspires me. I am very aware about my environment. I take cognizance of the things that are happening around me. Most times I get my ideas from books that I read because knowing that when you read a book by a particular author or more, then you have lived their lives and then at the same time you you know you must have gone through the whole process that they went through writing and then you also garner their experiences. Life inspires me, love inspires me, things that piss me off inspires me, things I see on the street inspire me. Everything, anything. Can be I would say my, my biggest inspiration is the environment. I draw kills from all goings on around me. Then I, I find the time to go into personal reclusion. I ruminate over what I've seen, experiences and all that. Then I, I, I do poetry, I do art, I write short stories. So I draw my inspiration basically from the environment. I choose to become a spoken word artist because um, spoken word itself is a form of expression. Spoken word is something that gave me an escape when I needed to free myself from the manacles of depression. Spoken word gave me that hope and I felt that through spoken word I would be able to reach out to other people. Because as an information professional, I realized that through spoken word I can communicate issues, communicate a lot of things to people around me and that's the best way because spoken word is much more accessible to the average audience, to an immediate audience. Love is patient, love is kind, we know. But she's also intrusive, like faults of sex and mass. Shameless, like tearing goodbyes at the airport, or an escaping fart in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Most days I'm depressed because I feel I'm not where I ought to be. I've seen it all, the young young man is, Kapongunan is, you know, Makala, you know enough to come out and keep them. If they never meant those words, why did they make you believe them? Broken promises of also questioning. Is that the way it should be? That a man, a deep bakatara who would rob one's abu-hobia, that mother-in-law, I'm not saying something. I started seeing myself like 
I was not worth anything until I discovered spoken word. Each in a way of sense of fire. Assurances of marriage that will never take place. So we will with his grace and then Naya and the laughing stop to me. <laughs> what spoken word did for me was it enabled me to pen down whatsoever it is that I'm feeling, pen it down and then express it. And when, when I'm expressing it, it's as if, you know, the thing just leaves me. Okay, before election, some politicians they see the from open roof and messages bends, not the confidence of the people. But when the time to deliver comes, far not defense, protecting their selfish selves against the people's interest and sharing the nation's wealth among the circle of friends. The spoken word for me was a panacea to my depression. It gave me that hope. The spoken word enabled me to tell people my story. And then when you tell people your story, it's half solved. Now, recalling those uplifting mantras printed on campaign banners, one begins to wonder, nah, eh, about to question me. There were other instances in the Kamadi Binego, Russia owed him that I swear to God, but to pay back that money, I won't walk. Growing up, I had every opportunity to give my family a bad name. But then, I got to decide that if my family were a nice photograph, then I could be the friend. I used to be the kid that everyone hated. I used to be the kid that people thought wouldn't amount to anything because when I was younger, I was pig-headed. I was not really settled. I was unorganized. Why can't we hold people accountable for their words? Why do people say I do, I do? For better, for worse, I do, I do. In sickness and in health, I do, I do. For richer or poorer, I do, I do. But when there is no more money, then you want it, you are going to <laughs> The spoken word gave me the gumption to express myself, to tell people that this is the person I am. Then it wasn't really easy because you know, you always, people begin to see you as someone who is nothing, who is not really worth it, someone who is just there, who doesn't have a great future. But then when I started doing spoken word, the stage was there for me to slay that silence, to tell people that this is what I can do actually. This is the person I am. <laughs> Walk without action, like a brain without cell, like a flayed tires, like a midnight camp without the surrounding fires. You know, spoken word, deca, an arrow far from its bow, and you know it never returns. So beware of the promises you make. Enough said, enough mistakes made. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Bakana, if you don't reap what you sow, what you sow, you will be reaped. I started as an information consultant working with a media firm in Abuja, then later moved to an NGO where I was the social media manager. But then these jobs were not really favorable. When I lost my job, I needed to support my art as well because nobody will give you a penny for these things. Nobody will give you a penny to go to the studio and start recording because not everyone even believes in the dream. You just have to tell yourself the truth. And because I was lucky enough to have a vehicle, I struggled to maintain it. And that way, I was able to taxi around the city, picking people at clubs, at bus stops, despite so many challenges. We can do more with the better formation to inspire children living in slums and dark corners. Children from broken homes, their lives like broken bones. We can do more to make them become, for instance, men of honor, women of substance. We can do more to make young people understand the purpose for existing, living with meaning and achieving, instead of rusting on the sidelines of redundancy or being available in the toolkit of insurgency. I've fallen into the traps of several law enforcement agencies and I recall that there was a certain day when I was driving home with my friend and the police accosted me and demanded for my keys for no reason at all because my car papers particulars were complete everything was up to date I was beaten that night I was hit with the edge of the gun and I was bruised that night. I thought I was going to die that night. There was another occasion when I was driving to a club to pick people who had actually come to party. And then on my way, I was attacked by thieves. 
and they try to snatch my car away from me and being that this is the car that really helps me around it eases my movement in the city to attend several events and it's also this is what I also used to feed in the town so I was not ready to relinquish my car and it became trouble for me that night I only had to escape on scat running a taxi business and also doing spoken word is not easy at all because driving on its own draws a lot of energy it drains you entirely most especially in the evening when you are done walking so what I actually do is sometimes I take a break even though I would have a pounding headache but I'll just take a break and then try to see how I can keen into the other aspect of my life which is much more crucial to me to switch from my daily hustle to my dream it's always very hard for me when I was growing up I would say I was lucky enough to have had an enabling environment because my parents were both educators there are books all around the house but they just wanted me to read and pass my exams take your CV and start moving around looking for job or just walk somewhere but then this dream is something that belongs to me and I needed to prove to people that this dream can be achieved I perform at different events I hold workshops I teach poetry at different schools and it's been favorable to be very honest but I'm looking beyond that building a piece begins from observation and sometimes what comes to mind naturally most of my pieces come from the streets from the experiences on the streets because basically the street is my laboratory I look around me I see street children I see prostitutes sometimes at night and these are some of the things that help my pieces this is some of this is some of the places where I get most of my inspiration from. I read a lot of books and I also research a lot. And then I don't take things for granted, most especially the things that happen around me. I tend to document them. I tend to reflect on them and ask the right questions. And that way I'm able to get ideas that I can develop later into a poem in the most creative way. I write impact poems. I write poems that inspire young people. So, it's not all about inheritance, like monetarily. You don't just have to say you have houses, or you have a child, your children will inherit it. If there's no value, don't mismanage it. It's really amazing speaking to the parents of Christland schools. Here I came around to talk about family values and wow, we can actually put this into practice. Basically, the parents are happy. They like the message and they promise to take it home to improve their families. Most times, I felt worthless because I needed a friend and I didn't have one. But then I found a friend in the words I put down, the characters I developed. Sometimes when I go up on stage to perform, I feel nervous. Sometimes I feel I'm the best thing in the world. And sometimes I just don't know what, I, what to do. Sometimes I just don't know who I am on the stage. Sometimes it's when I start performing the piece, then that's when I get into it. That is when I connect with the world. I speak. Three things that define me are being a dreamer, a fighter, and a believer. Because they revolve around tenacity, purpose and vision. I believe in what I'm doing, which is spoken word. I really believe in it. I set my heart in it. I want the world to know me for my passion, for my art, for my person. I want the world to know that I have lived. I want the world to know that someone came and that person conquered despite the challenges. I'm not joking. Just like the way music and comedy grew up and became, that's how spoken word will begin and begin. And we that have begun to begin will eventually win because spoken word is not uh, something else. It's not even a sin. It's the reason why we will win. And I'm in. I want the world to know that I am not a failed dream. Even though I didn't do what I set out to do in the first place, even though I'm doing something else. In fact, something I'm so much passionate about that people think is crazy. I want people to know that I came here and then I was able to achieve 
my dreams. I want people to make reference to me and say that person, when he was here, he actually did what he ought to do despite the challenges, despite the discouragement, despite the negative things around him, he was able to come out with a positive mindset. He was able to make it to the top.